look at where we're sitting. Look what you see with the naked eye. You see nothing. Now, if I wait till I see anything, am I doing any good based on what the infrared camera is telling me? There's 300 plus degrees at three feet of three foot level, 50% of the space radiating down on our gear. And I can tell you it was quite warm. What happens as we're sitting there? We're just baking. Now, if we're hurting and we can't take it in PPE, the victim can't take it in pajamas. So why are we not progressively cooling? Whether you're compartment fire behavior tactics, whether you're a smooth bore guy, I don't care. Both of you are right in your own context if applied properly. The difference is our CFBT brother and sisters get a lot more training than we do in how to apply that water. That's why we shouldn't be doing it. Because if you ever take a class, you'll realize how much more skilled they are in regards to applying water. It's almost like a surgeon. So why is this thermal balance such a big deal? Because the thermal balance is that layer of heat, the hot versus the cold. Back in the day when they went in without an air pack, they didn't want to disturb the thermal balance. Why? Because they wanted that bi-directional flow. They wanted to breathe the cool air down low. And they had 20 to 30 minutes before the room flashed over. We have one to five minutes now. And usually when we open the door, it's floor to ceiling smoke. So our thermal balance is to the floor anyway. Most of the time, your neutral plane's to the floor. And a lot of times, firefighters back then, by the way, that eagle that's on your helmet was designed to punch the first window out so they could stick their head out and get a breath and look and see the next window so they'd know where they'd breathe again. We don't have that luxury now. We have fancy stuff like PPE and air packs. And we have a camera that tells us where the heat is and we're leaving it on the truck. If we would just progressively cool as we go, erase that heat, get rid of it, and confirm that it's gone, and cool the superheated fuels, by the way, because that's a big issue right now, is that 10% of the potential is above your head, and 90% of the potential is four foot and down. All the fuels, nobody's cooling those fuels. They're crawling by them because they don't see anything on them, and they're leaving the door behind them open with fuels that are made of gasoline. And all of a sudden, it lights behind us, and we act surprised. Because as that thermal layer descends, it's causing that furniture to off-gas, saturating our PPE and killing the victim. The same people or teachers that told us, don't you dare upset that thermal balance, are the same ones that told you to open the nozzle and hit the ceiling when you got in the fire room. Well, here's the gee whiz factoid. If you wait to cool the space and you put the stream to the ceiling when you're in the fire room, you have not upset the thermal balance, you've enraged it. Because if it's 1,000 degrees at the ceiling, your steam production rate is now tripled. It's not 1,700 to 1. It's not 2,400 to 1. It's 4,800 to 1 because we failed to cool it. And then it will invert, and whatever is at the top will be half at the floor. If it's 1,000 at the ceiling, it will now be 500 at the floor. And that will not feel good to you. It will definitely not feel good to the victim. So why are we not progressively cooling with proper water application, contracting the gases, reducing the temperatures, it maintains better visibility and has less thermal upset. Imagine that. 